Hello again. My whole working life has been in carpentry and joinery and I've done a lot of weird and wonderful things as you can see here on my Facebook page if you go and have a look. Some of the other things I've been asked to do are a little bit away from carpentry and joinery. On a couple of occasions I've been involved with churches and being asked to remove artefacts from the church Many of these artefacts are just pure personal tastes from the people of the church. Some of them are vitally important that they are transferred and they are the war memorials. So that's what this video is about. I dismantled a war memorial from the old church and then refitted it into the new church. I also did a smaller war memorial which was just a bronze plaque like this but nevertheless very important that these are preserved for future generations. The very first thing I did was to make a template the same size as the back slab and to incorporate the holes in exactly the right place. This means saving lifting the whole slab up into place Trial fitting the two support bars meant that when it came to lifting the back slab in place that we'd only need to do it the once and not keep lifting it on and off. Care was taken to make sure that the support brackets were a good fit because again I didn't want to be lifting the back slab on and find there's a problem and have to take it off again. Now you can see how much easier it is lifting a sheet of hardboard on than a slab of stone that weighs about 80 kilo and then also I did a trial fit of the oak shelf just to make sure everything levels up okay. Everything's ready now for the back slab to be lifted in place. The hole in the centre is just a trial hole to see what was behind the plaster. I wanted to fit the brackets directly to the brickwork underneath the plasterboard so that afterwards I could cover it all over with plaster and then the fittings on the brackets would be concealed. The next part of this video I'll show you how I prepared the different parts or components ready for fixing together. What's always amazed me is that they were made all in one in a workshop. This monument, I don't know what it weighs, I'm just guessing it must be 200 kilo. So you can imagine bringing this from wherever it was made to the church and just handballing it in and then taking it to the wall and then fitting it on the wall. I mean, it sounds just a matter of fact me saying it like that, but it must have been quite an undertaking. Anyway, so when I dismantled it, I had to do it in reverse. I had to find out where all the fixings were and I could only do this by using a hacksaw blade because it was bedded on with plaster, scraping away the plaster finding where the brass screws were and then cutting through the brass screws and each piece would come away from the wall. So the preparation I do in this next part is that it's me drilling out the various pieces. The different parts had at least one fixing, mostly two fixings, one at the back and one underneath. And the holes were drilled out of each part from the back and then a piece of lead was inserted. It was either poured in or it was rolled up and hammered in. Nowadays we've got the luxury of plastic plugs and screws like this and then I would cut that off and then when I would put it on the wall 
I will cover this screw in epoxy resin and then put the epoxy resin in the corresponding hole and then fit it on. So that's what you'll see me do next in this video. The large backing piece is now in place. The brackets at the bottom are there to support the oak shelf. It just remains now for me to clean off all the old plaster, ready for the new fittings. The insert shows the detail of the metal support bracket. So yesterday I fitted the first parts of the white marble. This looks like a shelf and everything else fits on top of this. So for this I used a combination of epoxy resin and also I used tile adhesive. So it's a good strong fix that now. So these two here are the bottom pieces which are just aesthetic will fit under there like that now that's the resin done I'll now put some tile adhesive around the edge So that's the tile adhesive round the edge here. That will make a good joint now against the wall. Put some additional resin into the hole. Then I'll put this piece of timber in front just to hold it in place. Then the last thing is just to put a level on to check. This is just a dry fit, just to see how things fit prior to putting resin and tile adhesive on. Just putting the last piece into place now. Now that everything is set I can go around with some tile adhesive and scrape off the excess and fill in any holes. The very last thing to do is to apply granite and marble wax polish which is just rubbed on, left for a few minutes then polished off. Now we turn to the smaller bronze plaque which originally was screwed to the pulpit in the old church. 
So now I've made this oak patras which will fix to the wall and very conveniently fits underneath uh, a wall light. I made a point of keeping the original brass screws. Now brass screws are a very soft metal and putting them into oak means you have to be careful that they won't snap when they're twisted. Now as well as putting pilot holes in I also use a trick of the trade which is put a little bit of liquid soap on the screw and then it assures that the screws won't break. Now the last thing to go on are matching bronze caps which fit over the screws and will give a nice neat finish. These are just tapped in very lightly and just in case they come loose I put a spot of PVA glue on the tip 